All right, welcome to my video on cotangent. In this video, I'm going to show you how to graph the cotangent. We're just going to focus mainly on one cycle of it, and then we'll answer all of these questions right here. So first and foremost, what is the cotangent? Well, it's defined as the reciprocal of tangent. So whatever tangent gives you, just kind of flip that over, one over that. For example, I know that the main value of tangent the value that I immediately think of for tangent is that the tangent of zero is zero, which means that the cotangent of zero is one over that, which is undefined. So where the tangent kind of was shaped like this, if you remember, it went through zero. The cotangent doesn't at all. The cotangent doesn't even exist at zero. So I'll start by putting my vertical asymptote here. There is no value there. So right away, it's a little bit different, right? It's going to have the kind of the general same shape. It's going to kind of be reflected and just kind of shift it over a little bit. So let's get some other values in here. If we think about, you know, how this kind of relates to the unit circle, we keep coming back to this and the reference angle chart and stuff like this. The cotangent's all the way down here, and that relates to the tangent. So if we already talked about zero. Uh, let's do pi over 4. So the tangent of pi over 4 is another really interesting number be, or value because it's nice. It's nice and neat. The cotangent of pi over 4 then is 1 divided by that, which is 1. So both of these are really nice and neat numbers. All right, those are going to translate really nicely to our graph. So let's put that in there now. Tangent, The cotangent of pi over 4 is 1. All right, so we need to set up our, our x-axis. So I'll put pi over 4 right here. And I'll make this positive 1, this positive 2, this negative 1, and this negative 2. So tan the cotangent of pi over 4 is 1. So I'll put that right there. All right, next up, let's go down to maybe pi over 2. So tangent of pi over 2 is undefined, right? If you need to know why that is, you go back to the fact that, you know, tangent is sine over cosine, and you just take 1 divided by 0. Well, for cotangent, you take 0 divided by 1. So the cotangent of pi over 2 is 0. So cotangent of pi over 2 is 0. So pi over 2 is right here. Cotangent of pi over 2 is 0. And again, cotangent is defined as the flipped over version of, of tangent. It's 1 over tangent. Well, that means that it's cosine over sine. So the cosine we said was the x value in the unit circle, and the tangent is the y value. So we are just flipping over the tangent. 1 divided by 0 is your cotangent right here. Okay, so those are the two points that we kind of started with. So if we continue down the line here, this would be 3 pi over 4, and this would be pi. So let's see where our other values are. So tangent of 3 pi over 4. Well, 3 pi over 4, let's see, 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant. That's 3 pi over 4. The reference angle here, which we talked about in a previous video, is pi over 4. So I want to know the tangent of pi over 4. To, to answer the tangent of 3 pi over 4, just answer the tangent of pi over 4, which is 1. It's in the second quadrant, and I know tangent's negative in the second quadrant. All right, so the tangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1. Well, the cotangent of 3 pi over 4 is negative 1 over 1 which is still negative 1. So that goes right here. All right, you can already see a nice symmetry occurring. Let's go to pi. Let's go to the pi next up. So let's think about the tangent of pi. Well, again, on our unit circle, pi is over here. It's negative 1, comma, 0. So the tangent is sine over cosine. The sine is the y value. 
cosines the x value. So the tangent of pi was 0. But the cotangent of pi is cosine over sine. All right, so the cosine at pi is negative 1, while the sine at pi is 0. You can't divide by 0, so this is undefined. So the cosine, or the cotangent rather, at pi is undefined. So I'm going to put an asymptote right there. So again, anywhere that the tangent, anywhere that the tangent is zero, the cotangent is undefined. All right, so I have my little asymptote set up. I have my x-intercept right there at pi over two. So now I'm just ready to connect. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these. All right, it's going to look similar to the tangent, but just kind of like reflected and shifted a bit. And it's not the easiest thing to draw on my tablet, but I'll do my best. Something like this. And it would keep repeating itself, right? It would go like this, it would go like this, and repeat itself forever and ever. So the period is the distance it takes to complete one cycle. So from here to here is pi units, just like tangent was. The amplitude, there isn't any, because the amplitude, remember, is the height of these things, and it goes on forever. The domain is all real numbers, except where the function does not exist. The function doesn't exist at 0, pi, 2 pi, and so on. So we'll just say 0 plus pi times n, but you don't need the 0, so you just put pi times n and define n as some integer, some whole number. So when n is 0, x doesn't exist at 0. When n is 1, pi times 1 is pi. Uh, the range is everything, so negative infinity to infinity. x-intercept, pi over 2, comma 0, it's right here. The maximum, there isn't any. The minimum, there isn't any. Asymptotes, x equals 0 and pi. And of course it would go on forever, but we'll only list those two for right now. And these transformations we'll come back to when we get to uh, our next transformation set, set of videos. So. Uh, this is your cotangent. All right, if you kind of compare that to the tangent, the tangent kind of looked like uh, this. It went through that point, through zero, and then down this way. All right, tangent and cotangent kind of look like that in comparison to each other. Tangent had an asymptote here. All right, so where tangent did not exist, the cotangent is zero, and vice versa. Where the tangent was zero, which was right here, the cotangent doesn't exist. So there's a nice connection there. A little bit better looking graph is right here. My right, cotangents in black. The pink lines, of course, are the asymptotes, and you can see that it's it's cyclical. It keeps repeating over and over again. All right, so there you go. Uh, for all six of these videos, if you've been watching all of them. You'll notice that every time I made connections to the unit circle, I made connections to all these reference angles. I made connections to, you know, in, in some cases, Sokotoa. And then we transformed all those concepts to our coordinate plane. And in my class, I leave, I let my students, I, I actually make my students label their own axes. All right, so they're forced to come up with these radian values themselves and these y values themselves. Uh, some graph paper has it already for you, but I think it's really valuable to, to learn how to sort of break this up into sort of fourths. And pretty much every one of the graphs you can think about as fourths, right? This would be the whole period. If you cut that in half, you got pi over 2. You cut that into fourths, you get your pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Uh, so there you go, that wraps up cotangent, that wraps up all the six basic trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, and all three of their reciprocals. 
Uh, in the next set of videos, I'm going to walk through how to work with transformations when we change the, the A value and it affects amplitude. The B value is going to affect our period. The C value is going to affect our phase shifts, our left and right. And then finally, the vertical translation will be affected by our D value. And we'll also look at some reflections where the A value is negative. So I uh, hope this helped and uh, look forward to the next ones. Thanks.